statistically speaking, you should be a beetle. So think you're a lucky star that you're not. Or, you know, maybe you want to be a beetle. No judgment. Hello, my intellectually curious love bugs. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nancy. I am an entomologist, which means that I study bugs. And I live in Ecuador, where normally I do entomological ecotourism, but obviously that's not happening. So welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's makeup look is inspired by this beetle. This is the Violet Ground Beetle from the UK, and this picture was taken by Adam. So thanks so much for inspiring today's look i mean like it's october right it's like halloween so we can do whatever we want to our faces it's cool all right so i thought because like amidst all like the 2020 doom and gloom it would be fun if we chatted a little bit about memes so let's react to memes yes my friend who was helping me edit youtube videos before she decided to go back for her phd it's okay audrey i forgive you was kind enough to give me a folder of memes, so I have not seen these memes. Let's open up the meme folder. I will link all of the entomology meme sources down in the reference section. So our first meme is from Honeycomb Wall. Okay, so this is from a game. I don't know what game this is from. Everyone, as I tried to explain before, you cannot get honey from a wasp nest. Nintendo, I just don't think there's any science to support that, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah. Wasp is great. Yeah. Um, you cannot actually get honey from wasp nests. Wasps, especially the social wasps, card up there, tend to feed their larva protein. So, uh, like, crushed up, liquefied spit insects delicious if you ask me <laughs> but yeah you are not gonna get any honey from a wasp nest lols oh nintendo come on next i'm gonna lab bring out your dead <laughs> soaked in enough ethanol to ko king kong i am not dead yet <laughs> oh my god yes i actually have a hilarious story about this so when i was doing my insect collection for my taxonomy class my friend had a bunch of sylvanids, and sylvanids are like these little tiny beetles. Sometimes they get in grain. So she was holding on to her colony of sylvanid beetles to give us all for our insect collections. And she stored them in alcohol for a week before we were all going to pin them and turn our collection in. Stored them in alcohol a week, literally a week. We all pinned our little sylvanids, and then literally the next day, they're all like trying to walk like stabbed through with the pin and we're like why aren't they dead literally drowned in 75 percent alcohol like should be dead not so we had to put them in the freezer to you know actually finish killing them whoops i did feel really really bad about that but we didn't know they weren't moving when we took them out of the thing anyway yes like literally this this is a thing that happens Next. Uh, bro, I put my switch down and a bee tried to collect pollen from my Animal Crossing flowers. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> that's really cute. Poor bee. Usually bees are attracted not only by the, like, the colors of the flower, but also the UV patterns and also the scent. So this was a very confused, sad little bee. Me, I'm just gonna clean this dirt out of the water dish. My tarantula. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> So they are so finicky. Sometimes you get tarantulas, you get ones that are really chill and you can get in there and you can pick them up and you can touch them and other tarantulas. And they can be even of the same species. They just have different personalities. And sometimes, yeah, they just like run to the other side or do their threat display or hide under something. Yeah, sometimes they were not having it. I had one like try and crawl up the glass wall of the cage. Good times. If all ants disguised on wings, predators also eat ants. <laughs> yeah, so I actually think that these are more mimicking spiders, and that's way more common to find spider wing patterns on wings. You can see it in flies, you can see it in moths. Um, so you can see it in a bunch of different unrelated groups, and they tend to mimic spiders. The thing is, whether it's mimicking spiders or it's mimicking ants, yes, they do have their own sometimes very specialized predators, but most things like do not want anything to do with ants and most things don't really want anything to do with spiders it's only kind of like specialized and specially adapted arthropods or vertebrates that are going to go after spiders and ants next have sex live the mantis <laughs> that's great 
despite the fact that they have this reputation that the females always eat the males, it's actually not the case. Most of the time, the females are going to leave the males alone and will only eat the males if she's really, really hungry. And she releases a type of chemical signal, like a pheromone, and males know to stay away from hungry females. It only happens about 20% of the time and isn't well documented in the wild. It's pretty well documented in captivity, but not super well documented in the wild. There are other organisms, like a lot of spiders, do cannibalize their partners. And a good example is with the peacock jumping spiders in Australia. If the male dances and he doesn't dance well enough, she will eat him. Like, don't even get to mate. You dance for me and you don't dance well enough, I eat you. That's, that's what happens. Pterosaurus evolving flight, flying insects who had no aerial competition. <laughs> Insects were the first thing to take to the skies and actually right now in my Facebook group, the Sci Hive, our learning community, I'm doing a live video series on insect flight. So if that's interesting to you, be sure to join the Sci Hive below. But we don't actually really even know where wings evolved from. Ending theory which has more support is that wings have actually come from gills and we have some genetic evidence to suggest that some genes that are responsible for the development of gills are also responsible for the development of wings. Next. Me hits web down with broom. Spider. Wow. Me puts up fake web decorations on Halloween. Spider. Wow. <laughs> Poor spider. I love these memes that anthropomorphize spiders because I feel like there's so much hate against spiders that all these are just like, yeah. Yeah, they need the help. Spotted lanternfly after dodging your futile stomps. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, for those of you who don't know, in the eastern, the northeastern United States right now, spotted lanternflies are a huge, huge problem. They are a pest from Asia, and they are just wreaking havoc, like trees will have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. We're trying to stop them. There is like literally wanted dead <laughs> posters for them. So if you have them in your area, I'm definitely not the kind of person that's like, oh yeah, it's just like kill whatever. But these are so easily identifiable. Nothing else in the United States looks like these things and they're causing so many problems. And we're trying to track their spread. So if you see them, you can kill it. If you don't want to kill it, at least take a picture of it and I will set put the link here on screen because I forget the exact email, but there is a university in Pennsylvania specifically trying to track its spread and if you see it and take its picture, it will help them document where it is, what its populations are, and how it's spreading. So that'll be very, very, very helpful. You, yes you, can help science. You can also help this YouTube channel by giving it a thumbs up and subscribe with the bell notification on and turn to all. Next, me. How many beetle species are there? Evolution, yes. <laughs> so I'm sure you've heard if you are on this channel a lot, and if you aren't, now is a good time to subscribe, but I've said this a bazillion time, there are over 400,000 species of beetles. They make up a 20-ish percent of the named biodiversity on the planet. So that means if you were to name like every single thing, then every, like on your fingers, every time you got back to your thumb, we'll say your thumb, it would be a beetle. And statistically speaking, you should be a beetle. So thank your lucky stars that you're not. Or, you know, maybe you want to be a beetle. No judgment. Next. Tree, when people ask me to ID plants. Oh my God. Yes, that. Uh-huh, yeah. So I've had this a lot, not just with plants, probably less so with plants, but especially on my tours and stuff, people tend to think that because I know about insects and insects are weird and crawly, then I must know about all these other weird and crawly things. Like I obviously must know about snakes and frogs and like worms. And sometimes people assume that I know about birds too. And I have learned a lot about those different groups because I've had to for tourism. Cause like, if someone's just like, what is this? And I'm like, it's a frog. Like, obviously that does not look good on me or my intelligence. So I have gotten a couple books for identifying various things in the ecosystem. However, 
I always like to point out that I already study 58% of the biodiversity on the planet. Insects make up over half of all life on the planet. I'm sorry, I didn't study frogs. I'm sorry, I didn't study birds, okay? I'm sorry, but like my brain is kind of full already. I will do my best, but there's a good chance, especially if it's some like really tiny, rare, odd frog thing. I do not know what it is and please do not ask me about plants. I know a few like culturally used plants here. I know a couple plants that have interesting ecology, but if you just point to like some random flower and be like, what are this? I am also going to say, what are this? I do not know. So yeah, PSA. Next. Stop screaming or draw 25 with a cicada in the back. Amazing. So I don't know if you guys have seen a couple of my other videos. Um, I have one on cicadas linked up here. I also have one where I was walking through the jungle during the cicada season and you can definitely hear them in the background. They are just out. They're just screaming because they just want to attract the ladies. It is only the males that can buzz. And for our word of the day, our word of the day is timble. And timbles are the structure that cicadas vibrate to make their sound. And really interestingly, they are basically just like this hollow out structure. So they are kind of like their own little boom box. So not only do they have the structure to make the sound, but their body has evolved to reverberate and amplify that sound. So some cicadas can buzz up to 120 decibels, which is like a motorcycle going by, like an orchestra pit, a jackhammer, not quiet. So when you put a whole bunch of them in the forest, all at once, together, the forest just screams. Anyway, I'm not sure if you've also noticed that when I swear in these videos, my bleeping out sound is of the Zamara cicada. I have both taken the picture and got recorded the sound. So yeah, that is what the Zamara cicada sounds like. Oops. Next. One day I'm going to be a beautiful butterfly. Several poor life decisions later. Lamp. <laughs> so there's a couple things. One, generally the prettier the caterpillar is, the more boring and brown the moth is. Generally those really bright caterpillars are venomous in some sort or poisonous in some sort. And then when they grow up to be a moth, they tend to be brown because they change being, you know, chemically defended or venomous with spines to just trying to blend into the background. Also, lamps. Uh, your moths are attracted to lamps because they think that is the beautiful moon and that is how they are going to navigate. I actually wrote an article about that. It is linked below for this Ask an Entomologist. And they actually circle lights out of Fibonacci sequence. And that's because they try and keep the light source on one side of their body and at a certain angle to their eyes. So that way, if it's the moon, they travel in a straight line. However, if it's a fixed light source in the middle, they're going to circle around it. And it's a pretty interesting mathematical phenomenon. If you're interested in that, in the reference section below. Next. Thanks for taking my gammies to my lovers, is the flower. <laughs> Don't make it weird, man. <laughs> Cute, hilarious. <laughs> Interestingly, when we see the explosion of flowering plants, we also see the explosion of winged insects. And the diversification of flowers seems to have really led to the diversification of insects, which is really, really interesting. It's interesting because some flowers actually trick things into pollinating them. So like when you think of the mutualism, like, oh, the flower gets its pollen spread and the bee gets food. But sometimes there's tricksters in here. Sometimes you have a thing called nectar robbing where the bee actually can't fit into the flower and will just pierce the back and suck all the goop out of it. Hilarious. And then there are other flowers that mimic the, this, this is really common in orchids, that mimic kind of like what the female bee would look like or the female wasp, depending on what species it's trying to attract. And also produces the mating pheromone of that particular species. So the male bee comes in or the male wasp comes in thinking that he's found a female bee, literally tries to mate with it, like dump sperm in, like the whole 10 yards, and the flower dumps a couple pollen balls, either on its antennae or on its back, depending on the species of flower, 
and the bee will fly away when the wasp will fly away only to rinse and repeat with another false female. It's a really interesting example of how plants have kind of taken advantage of the mating systems of insects. XKCD actually did a little comic about this with an orchid and an orchid bee. So there are these orchids whose flowers look like female bees. When males try to mate with them, they transfer pollen. This orchid, Ophirus epiphora, makes flowers, but no bees land on them because the bee that mimics it went extinct long ago. Without its partner, the orchid has resorted to self-pollinating, a last-ditch genetic strategy that only delays the inevitable. Nothing of the bee remains, but we know what existed from the shape of the flower. It's an idea of what the female bee looked like to the male bee, as interpreted by a plant. The only memory of that bee is a painting by a dying flower. And that's kind of what the flower looks like. I'll remember your bee, orchid. I'll remember you. It's a really interesting story about how we have no evidence of the original pollinator, except for what this flower looks and smells like. Which In 60 million years, aliens will know humans only by a fuzzy clip of a woman in an Axe commercial. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> so love bugs, which one of these was your favorite? Let me know down below. If you have other memes that you would like me to react to, <laughs> Feel free to DM or email them to me. It's all in the reference section below. I'd be really happy to do another series of memes. I've created some memes myself. I think they're funny. <laughs> and I would love to do another meme video because they're hilarious. <laughs> With that being said, I will see all of you love bugs next week in another video. Check out here for some entomologist explains if you just want to learn stuff about bugs. And down here, are some more commentary react videos where you can also learn about bug stuff but also see me react to things. So I will see you all next week. Bye!